Hey, what's up, daywalkers and fellow travelers of the night and all you Gotham maniacs out there? We're here to talk about Joker Folie Adu, which is coming out in theaters later this year by Todd Phillips, starring Joaquin Phoenix as Joker and Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn, respectively. I'm so excited for this film because I really, really enjoyed the first one. I remember we were doing a Joker series actually on this channel, which a lot of it got deleted because I got freaked out by the COPPA thing and, you know, no one really, I didn't do enough research to and, and didn't have enough people to ask whether I should delete things that were more mature rated because we talked about some really intense stuff on those episodes leading up to the movie, obviously, because there's some really intense Joker stories out there. And I got freaked out that my channel would be moved into the mature rated area. And I decided to just delete those episodes, which was also a mistake. I found out I should have just privated them or done something else. So, you know, you learn lessons learned, but we were following that first movie pretty closely. And I had a really good time doing that. And when the film came out, I was really blown away by the performance, by the directing, you know. And yeah, it pulls a lot from classic movies, you know, that Todd Phillips was inspired by. And sometimes I kind of rail against things like that. But I thought it was done pretty well, actually. And it gave the movie a unique look compared to other movies that were out at the time and even now. And it looks like they're continuing that, but also changing it a bit with this musical aspect that they're putting into the next one. So I didn't do a trailer reaction because I kind of just watched it on the spot when I saw it late last night and was like, all right, well, I can't film a genuine reaction now because I already saw the thing. So I just want to talk about it real briefly and just say that I really did like the trailer. The cinematography is still top notch. I think the way Todd and his cinematographer and everyone frame these shots make it look really great. Like, you know, just absolutely do. And the fact that the first movie kind of dove into mental health in the way that it did dealing with childhood trauma and things like that. And also like the, the, the side of it where people are forgotten and there's, you know, that was in uh, Joaquin Phoenix's speech. He was like, you know, Todd Phillips, you lied to us. You made a movie about, you know, gun violence and, and all this other stuff and childhood trauma. And then you, you know, using a comic book character and you, so you kind of lured us in by our love for the character and then hit us with something that we weren't expecting um, and dealing with it about someone who has been forgotten by society and what happens to that person if things go horribly wrong when they are forgotten by that society. And I really appreciated that approach. And it didn't make me, I wouldn't say I, I maybe had empathy on some level for the journey Arthur Fleck was on, but once he chooses to you know elevate his life and murder someone on live TV, obviously he goes into full-blown villain territory at that point. And even like shooting the guys in the subway, it's like, okay, that's, you You killed, you know, they weren't good guys. Again, we're seeing everything from his, his perspective. So you don't really know what you're seeing to a certain extent. Like the movie, he's like an unreliable narrator to some extent. And that I just also found fascinating about that first movie is you're just, every scene is him. You're seeing the world through his point of view. And now he's not alone anymore. And that was like a really powerful line in this movie where he says, I'm not alone anymore. Like, he's like, and why aren't we talking about that? Like, the fact that I'm not alone and what he did, you know, to Gotham was a horrific thing. It caused lives to be taken. And, you know, he's not a good person by any means, but he's at the point now where it, at least it seems like people are trying to help him or, or they're just trying to sedate him and keep him away. And, and maybe that's also the point is that, like, he's once again, like in the first movie, they're just drugging him to neutralize him. And then you have, like, a devout follower like Harley someone who just admires what he did, who's also maybe feels like a forgotten person and just didn't have the strength to motivate herself to do something like he did. Now she seems to be here and working with him or, or connecting with him. And who knows if she's even real. She does the same thing with the fingers to the head like uh, Zazie Beetz did in the first movie. Zazie Beetz was a real person, but, uh, but their connection wasn't real. So it makes me question that too. Like is Harley Quinn real in this movie or is she just something Arthur comes up with to help him get out you know like in the comics harley is his psychiatrist and then she gets pulled into his world and kind of gets you know converted in a way um to his way of thinking and follows him and, and you know kind of leaves her you know, world of being a psychiatrist and and you know someone who's trying to help people she leaves that away when she starts revealing more of her past and that she has childhood trauma and she connects with you know the joker in the comic books and in mad love and stuff so that's a great journey, but it's a story that has been told. So that would be interesting if in this one, he conjures someone who is trying to help him, you know, and he conjures up another patient. Maybe sometimes she's a patient. Maybe sometimes she's a therapist. Like, we don't know. We haven't seen too much based on this teaser. We don't get a ton there, um, but they do have the musical elements added in. And now me personally, I know this may shock some of you. 
I'm a fan of musicals. Um, I don't love uh, like every musical for sure, but I like stuff like Jesus Christ Superstar. I really like, um, you know, things like Sister Act. I wouldn't really call it a musical, but it's a movie with a lot of music in it. And that's kind of what I see this maybe could be. Uh, but again, I don't know for sure. But having that as an element kind of makes sense as someone who is looking for love on some level, you know, as Arthur Fleck was in the first movie, some kind of acceptance and love. And he never really got it until he caused chaos. In this one, someone who's connecting with another person, it kind of makes sense. Like when I went through, you know, different therapy things, physical therapy and stuff, like music was a part of it. It was part of the, you know, rehabilitation stuff. And it was because it would motivate you. And you find music that motivates you to get through physical therapy and there's stuff like that. And then even through therapy therapy and then meditation and stuff I've done over the years, Music also kind of plays a part, different types of music, obviously, because I won't listen to heavy rock when I'm meditating typically, um, but I'll listen to something more calming. And so music is a, a natural element to rebuild in a way or calm the, the, the mind, in, if, if you will. And that doesn't work for everyone for sure, but it does work a lot of the times and, and even in cases that you think it wouldn't. And so it's neat that that was the approach they put in this and they're using that as like this uh, psychiatrist version of a building block to kind of, you know, maybe launch Arthur into a more positive direction if that's possible and it seems like it's just bringing him closer to Harley and he's like imagining these different scenarios where they're just caught in these on these musical sets and you know um crooning uh, crooning each other or something you know or uh, or just uh, singing to each other um and doing all these duets and stuff so it has like this look of like you know the first film mixed in with like a La La Land kind of vibe at times and I think that works for people who are struggling with their perception of reality and i think that could work in this film so just going off the visuals and what i've seen in this new teaser i really liked it uh, i thought it got me even more excited than i already was for the movie and i'm so excited for lady gaga as harley quinn if you remember back on the venom vlog when the first venom movie came out it came out around the time a star was born was came out and i went and saw that because i'm a big lady gaga fan i have the biggest crush on her and uh, and actually i found out that purple has a crush on her too um but that would make sense uh, to, to to a little bit because we're again, mental health and stuff. So like, it looks like that is something that may be carried over. But I know he has been interested in this film. And uh, and as I saw him make, you know, have some images saved on our phone that I was like, well, he was out fronting, you know, earlier and I didn't save these pictures to our phone and he just found some cool artwork of, uh, you know, of this movie. And so I was like, all right. So he seems to be like pulled into it a little bit. And he actually watched the first one uh, finally and uh, after seeing clips of it on Instagram and stuff and so it's neat every once in a while I'll go to his Instagram account just to kind of see what shows up in his feed and I'll, I'll see like you know funny shows that'll pop up and I'll see some scary stuff that pops up sometimes and but then I'll see some joker stuff and scary meaning like um you know YouTubers and Instagrammers and TikTokers who make like little short you know 30 second scary things like he seems to It'd be interested in those too, you know, whereas like Blue, if you go to his Instagram, he watches like, you know, cars, you know, like and road rage and, and things like that and people like making stuff and building stuff. So it's like, it's very interesting to look at the other alters and what they see on their feed. Mine is comic book stuff, obviously, and littered with that. So it's um even more reason to kind of be intrigued by this movie and perception of reality and, and all that stuff. Like it's it just, again, Arthur Fleck, you could, it's easy on some level to have empathy for him but I wouldn't say he's a, a guy that I'm rooting for anymore. And so that's why I want to see the second film because at the end of the first film, I'm like, okay, I can't root for this guy anymore. He's, he went way over, like by the end of the film, like halfway points, you know, he's, he's already over a little bit. Then it just gets worse and worse. And by the end, you're just like, okay, like this guy, can you help someone who's gone this far? And I want to know the answer. And so now that's the second one's coming out, maybe that's what it's all about is can you? Uh, still save someone who has gone that far or help someone that has gone that far. And uh, I don't know, based on all the explosions I've seen in this trailer, I'm going to guess not. So what do you think of Joker fully? I do the trailer, the teaser that came out. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. And as always, we'll keep talking down there. And are you excited for Lady Gaga? I am. That shot of her looking almost like the crow walking up the, the courthouse steps and everything and then her putting the makeup on. And that last shot where she draws the the smiley face on the the window there when they're speaking through the window and he li lifts up and smiles it's so shot so well like it's it's really really well done todd phillips is killing it with the visuals and his team and everyone who's responsible for these shots like amazing like it just it's lit well it's the the composition is great like it, the contrast everything's there that i love in filmmaking and so i'm very pumped so those are my thoughts let me know yours down below and we'll keep talking thanks so much see you in the future peace